morning, how's it going guys? My name is Ray and today I got a request from a friend of mine who is vegetarian to make a vegetarian dish based around ragu, cheese and garlic bread. So I'm going to try and create a dish based on beef ragu but I'm gonna swap around the beef with mushroom and with this recipe I'm trying to achieve the same flavor profile as the original ragu but probably just different texture because we use mushroom instead of beef. Let's go! For this ragu, I'm gonna use three types of mushrooms for their unique texture and flavor. Here I have some Swiss flat mushrooms. I picked this one to imitate the chunks of meat that you find in your ragu because I know when sauteed properly, this mushroom will have a meaty and slightly chewy kind of texture. Next, I have some button mushrooms which I will chop pretty finely just for overall binding texture in ragu. And last but not least is the porcini mushrooms. You usually find this in dried form and when soaked in warm water, this mushroom will give you an amazing flavorful stock. I picked this one because this will provide you with rich meaty flavor in the dish. To prepare the Swiss mushroom, all you need to do is to snap the stem like so and cut it into half centimeter cubes. Some people like to peel the skin off the top like this, but it doesn't matter if you do or don't, they're still gonna taste the same. For the button mushroom, you're gonna still have to do the same, but you're just gonna have to cut it really finely for this one. As for the porcini mushrooms, all you have to do is just put it in a bowl and soak it with some warm water for 5 to 10 minutes, which gives us enough time to mince some garlic and slice some onions. And to that mixture, I'm just gonna add a couple bay leaves and one star anise to boost the meaty flavor of the dish. And by the time you finish that, your porcini mushroom should be ready. All you need to do is just squeeze the water out of it and cut it into small pieces. Don't discard the water because that's where all those flavors are. And last but not least, you're gonna need some diced carrots. Just divide the carrot into 4 lengthwise and dice away. Next, heat up some oil in a pan over medium heat. And you can start frying all the vegetables as well as the star anise and bay leaves. And when the onions has turned translucent, you can add in the big chunks of mushrooms. And the objective here is to make sure the mushroom is dried off and fried properly. And here I'm adding a pinch of salt just to speed up that process and to season this layer of the dish. And when the Swiss mushrooms looks like that, you can add in the button mushrooms and the porcini mushrooms. And continue frying them until you can see no more water coming out of the mushrooms. Something like this. Another important tip in seasoning is that you have to season every layer of your dish. And as you can see here, I'm adding a little bit more salt, black pepper, chili flakes, as well as some smoked paprika powder. By seasoning every layer of the dish, you'll get more mature and more developed flavor out of your dish. Next, you're gonna add 50 grams of tomato paste and you're gonna let it saute for another 1 to 2 minutes just to take the raw edge of the tomato paste. After that, you can add a splash of wine just to deglaze the pan and followed by the porcini water. Make sure you strain and leave a little bit of stock in the bowl because the bottom bit can be a little bit sandy. All you need to do now is to simmer this mixture over medium heat until it thickens slightly and becomes syrupy. And when your mixture looks like this, you can take out the star anise and the bay leaves because they've done their job. Next, you're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes and let the mixture simmer over medium heat for another 5 to 10 minutes. And while you're waiting for that, you can taste and adjust your seasoning. Here, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, black pepper, and also a little bit of sugar just to balance the acidity from the tomatoes. And when your sauce looks like that, it's pretty much done. So you can turn off the heat and add in some chopped basil leaves. Up to this point, I still believe this dish can be considered a vegan dish. So if you're vegan, you don't have to follow this recipe up to the end and you can just follow this recipe for the sauce and use it with your vegan pasta. My friend however can have dairy in her diet, so I'm gonna pimp this dish a little bit more by doing this ragu cheese boat thing. Just get yourself a sourdough and cut off the middle part like this. And we're gonna slice that middle part to be our garlic bread croutons. And here I have some melted butter mixed with some garlic, parsley, and salt. The measurement doesn't really matter but I'm just gonna give you the recipe down below. And all you need to do is to smear the butter all over the bread. Then pop them into preheated oven at 200 degrees celsius for about 10 minutes. After that, you can just have fun with your bread bowl and layer it with some mozzarella cheese, the ragu, and also some parmesan cheese. And now, because we're still waiting for me to finish playing with this bread bowl, I'm gonna slide in a little bit more information about the ragu itself. If you don't like mushrooms, you can definitely replace the Swiss mushroom and the butter mushrooms with something else. 
you can replace them with some of your favorite beans, tempeh, or any vegetables that's robust enough to withstand this kind of cooking. But I would recommend to keep the porcini mushroom in the dish because it's such a unique flavor and very meaty. I'll provide you with more information in the recipe down below. And yes, after you finish layering the bread, you just gotta melt the cheese in the oven for another 10 minutes. And for presentation, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit more ragu, parmesan cheese, and some chopped basil leaves. And when you're done, just transfer it into a chopping board or serving board like this, and it's ready to serve. And to be honest with you, I don't usually eat or even like vegetarian dish, but to me this dish is actually so meaty that I forget that it's actually vegetarian. So I would totally recommend you to give it a try. And there you have it guys, my mushroom ragu garlic bread dip. I hope you enjoyed watching that. This turned out really good actually, better than I expected. It was very meaty, although there is no meat product at all. It's even considered vegetarian before I put it in the bread and put cheese with it. So I hope you guys give it a try. If you guys like what you just watched, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And here are links to my previous videos, so check it out guys. Links and my show notes gonna be in the description box below. Leave a comment below, let me know what you wanna see me cook next week. See you next time guys, bye!